Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fireball magic script so that when you press a key, it's going to fire these fireballs at other players in the game or even zombies and it will kill them when they get hit. So let's get straight into the video. Okay, so firstly, you need to create your fireball. So I've done this. I'm going to insert a sphere into the game. I'm going to give it a color and I'm going to call it fireball. I'm going to set the material to neon and then I'm going to put in a fire object inside of this part so that it catches fire. I can then change the heat property to increase the amount of heat that comes out and the entire size of the fire object. When you've got your fireball, then you just need to drag it into server storage and then you will leave it in there. Next, we need to do the coding on the client, which is where we will script the um, detection of when a key is pushed down and then we can fire a remote event to tell the server that we want to create a fireball. So click on the starter GUI and insert a local script. Now inside of this local script, firstly, we're getting the user input service and this is used to detect when keys are pressed. So we've called a variable user input service and we've got that service. Then we've got two variables which will get the player and then it will get their character. So if the character isn't already there, it will wait for it. And when it has been added, the character variable will be set to their character object. We've then got a variable to get the player's mouse. This is so that we can set some, uh, we can get the position of their mouse. Uh, we actually won't be using that though. So I'm going to get rid of all of this because I converted it to using the player's character position. So we don't need this currently. So you don't need to write that. What you do need though is this debounce variable and we're going to set this debounce variable to false and this will just prevent us from firing lots of fireballs at once. So then we're going to use an input began event. So we're going to say user input service dot input began colon connect function and we've got two arguments here input and is typing. So when you press a key on your keyboard or click or press a gamepad button it's going to fire this function. Whenever there's input, so input on the keyboard or mouse or whatever, when that begins, it's going to kick off this function and this code's going to fire. And it gives us an argument which tells us the of input and that tells us the key that you press down. And this second argument is a true or false value and it tells us whether you're typing in the chat window. Because sometimes you don't want to fire your code if you're just pressing down keys in the chat window because you're typing to someone. You're not pressing down to activate your power. So simple if statement here if not is typing and that just basically means if you're not typing in the chat window then we're going to carry on with the rest of the script then the second if statement is the debounce so it checks to see if the debounce is false so not debounce is the same as if debounce is false so if the debounce is false we're going to set that debounce variable to be true and so that way when we press down the key again we're currently debounce is set to true so the not debounce condition is going to be false so this if statement will not run which means the code isn't going to re be repeated over and over again it will only be repeated when the debounce is set to false so whilst we're now the debounce is true we're going to check if the input key code so when you say input dot key code you're checking the key that was pressed down and we're going to say if the key code is equal to and then an enum so an enum is just like a list of um of keys that you can choose so enum dot key code if we were to write that again an enum is kind of like a, a check a, a drop down checklist where you can select a you can select whatever key you want to be pressed here it's, it's just a better way of putting it in um, speech marks so we can put down Q because that's the letter, letter the key that I want people to press down if you wanted a different key such as a or s or D whatever you would just write that key in there and there's also support for keys like um, control I think let's have a look okay well they've got caps lock uh, remember control isn't available on Mac so that's probably why but there's lots of different keys that you can choose I'm gonna choose Q okay so if the key that's being pressed is Q then we're gonna fire this remote event called fireball so we need to insert a remote event into replicated storage and we're going to call it fireball and we're going to fire off that remote event and we're going to pick it up on the server and create the fireball we're then doing a wait a very quick wait 
just for the debounce and we can set it back to false. Now I had the debounce because originally I set it to 2 so you could only fire one fireball every 2 seconds but just to test it I'm going to set it to 0.01 so basically we can fire them as many times as we like. Now once we've got the code down for that local script we can move on to a server script. So insert a server script into the server script service by clicking on the plus and cl clicking on script and this is where the magic happens. So firstly we've created a variable for our fireball and this is the one that we just made and stored in server storage. Once you've got that, and I'm using wait for child by the way, just to make sure that it's fully loaded before the rest of the script runs, then we've got an event for our remote event. So when the remote event called fireball has been fired by the client, which we do here, when we fire off to the server, we're going to pick up that event, and we've got two arguments. We've got, oh, we haven't got the C-frame argument, because we deleted that, remember, with all the mouse stuff, because we don't we don't need it. We've just got one argument for the player, and that's automatically passed. So we can create a variable for the player's character, so we can just easily uh, access it, and we're going to create a clone of that fireball object. So we're going to clone it out of the server storage, and we're setting it as a variable called new fireball, so that we can just easily access it. So we've cloned out the new fireball, and now we're going to set it C-frame. So C-frame is kind of like its position, but it also takes into account rotation as well. So new fireball dot C-frame, and we're setting the C-frame to be at the character's humanoid root part. The humanoid root part is kind of like the torso. Each player has it, it's just a square block in the middle of their character. So it's great for just positioning objects um, wherever the character is standing. So we've set the new fireball C-frame, or its position, to the middle of their humanoid root part, the middle of their character. That's where it's going to start off from. That's where it's going to fire from. But we need to push it forwards. We need to push it forwards at our enemy. So to do that, we insert a body velocity. And what a body velocity does is if you set its force and then set its velocity, velocity is the direction that's going to go in, uh, where, where you want it to end up, basically. So we've told it where we want to end up, and we've given it a force. So it's going to push the fireball at a certain force maximum force will be 5000 so a number between 0 and 5000 um, and however close it gets if it's far away it will speed up because it will be using more force and the closer it gets it will start slowing down to, to our target and our target the velocity is the character's humanoid root part c frame which is where we started off from but we need the forward direction. So look vector is the forward direction of that C-frame position. So if you think about our character, if you think about it, imagine that the blue arrow, this, this little dot here, in fact, I'm going to draw it for you. This green dot is the humanoid root part dot C-frame. That's the origin C-frame. But when we say look vector, we're getting the direction. So the direction in a certain direction <laughs> okay that makes no sense but when we say look vector it's getting the forward direction so it's when we times it by a number then it's going to be that c-frame um say like 100 studs in front in the same direction so the fireball is going to move 100 studs in this direction because look vector is the forward direction of, of the c-frame of the humanoid root part so when we say humanoid root part dot c frame, that's the middle of their character. And then dot look vector is just the forward direction. And then we're timesing that by 100. So this piece of code will get us a position 100 studs in front of where the humanoid, is, humanoid root part currently is. So basically 100 studs in front of the player, which is, the, which is where we want the fireball to go. We want it to end up 100 studs in front of the player. And we want it to travel that distance. We want to fire it along that distance. So that's what the velocity does. It tells us the end point. Then the max force is a vector 3, made up of three values. How much force you want to be applied on the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So we want 5,000 force. Now, play around with these values. The more force you give, the faster it will go. And the bigger the direction, the bigger the gap, or the further along the point, you can increase the, the point distance by increasing this number that you times by. The, the longer it is, the longer the distance between the player and the end point, the quicker it's going to go uh, to get to the, the end. So I'm going to keep it at 250. 
and then we're going to parent it, we're going to put the body velocity inside the new fireball. So the body velocity will act on whatever it's inside. So when it's inside the, the new fireball, it's going to start working. And of course, then we put the new fireball into the workspace so everyone can see it. Then we're going to set up a connection. So when so the fireball would work now, but it just wouldn't kill anyone. And that's what this part of the code does. So we've set up a variable. And we've done this because we want to attach our new fireball to uh, a touched connection, okay? So, and we do this because we want to disconnect it at the end. Because if we didn't disconnect it, we'd have lots and lots and lots of events running at the same time. And it would cause something called a memory leak. Because when we've, when we've touched someone, we've touched a, uh, a character, and then we delete the fireball, the connection is still there. It's still running. It's still checking to see if it's been touched. And let's say you run this 3,000 times. That's 3,000 connections that are using your computer's resources. So we need to clear up so we can disconnect a connection. And when we disconnect a connection, it's no longer checking to see if it's been touched. So that's the great thing about connections. We can, we can tie them to a variable and then we can disconnect them. And that will save memory and prevent a memory leak. And a memory leak is when you have so many connections that it's using up your computer's resources and it starts to lag. So that's why we're using the, the variable touchcon, okay? So we've said local touchcon here, and the reason why we had to do that local variable above it was because when you define something with local here, it becomes an unknown for the things inside of the, of the event because you've only just defined it. So we need to define it beforehand. But then it's... it's contents are going to be updated to be this connection. Because then, when it, when the fireball has been touched, we've got the hit argument, so whatever touched it, we can then check to see if it's a player or an NPC by saying if hit.parent, which should be the character object, if it contains a humanoid. So we say find first child in case there isn't one. We don't want to break the script. So if there is, then we're going to quickly check to see if the thing that it touched isn't our character. Because we don't want to immediately fire it and then it accidentally touches us when it first gets set to touch our character. We don't want it to kill us. So we check to see if the brick that touched it, if its parent's name, so its character's name, isn't equal to the same name as our player. So if it's not us, then we're going to break the joints of that player. And when you call break joints on the player's character, it kills the player because it separates all of their body parts so they're getting killed. And then we're just checking to see if the touch con is still equal to something, if it hasn't already been disconnected or it hasn't been deleted then we're going to disconnect it. We're going to disconnect that touched event because we've touched somebody, we've killed them, the fireball is going to be destroyed, so we're going to clear up that connection, we're going to disconnect it because we don't want to, we don't want it to keep on checking even though there's no more fireball. So we're going to disconnect that connection and when we've done that, we can destroy the new fireball. And then, after the fireball has been moving for two seconds, we're going to disconnect that connection because we want to clear it up now and we're just going to delete the fireball. We don't want to keep it... Um, we don't want to keep it traveling all the way into space if it's not touched anybody after two seconds. So we're going to clear up that connection and we're going to destroy it. So there we go. That should be our fireball all done. So let's go and test it out. I'm going to click play now, play here so I don't spawn into the zombies. The zombies are going to come and get me. Now you can see there's a little bit of curve. I'm not too sure why this is to be honest. I'm not too sure but I think it's quite cool because you can turn your character and sometimes it's on the left side, sometimes it's on the right side. So if anyone wants to let me know why that happens in the comments, then I'll be glad to know. But I still think it's a cool little fireball. And if I do find out how to do a straight one, which I will, then I'll do another video. But I thought this was a really cool introduction to things like body velocity and other things, just to make a quick little magic fireball, because you can rotate your character to move it. Um, but if you tinker around with those max force values and the velocity positions then you can make it faster stronger you know uh really really awesome so quick introduction there into fireballs and you can also make it go to wherever you've clicked the mouse and that was what i was doing earlier so in this fire server you could send mouse dot hit dot p if you got the mouse like we did earlier so local mouse equals player colon get mouse and then when you send mouse dot hit dot p that's the position of the mouse. Uh, I'm going to send mouse.hit because it's originally a C frame. The dot P is what converts it into a position. Difference between C frame and position is that position, sorry, C frame is a position with rotation. So when you say dot P, you're getting rid of that rotation. 
So we're just going to take the mouse C-frame as an extra argument. And then you can set the velocity, I think, to be the C-frame dot P, because velocity is a position. And let's see what happens now. I'd be surprised if this works first time. So we're going to position the mouse and press Q. Uh, okay, it doesn't work. Uh, it does work. It just goes backwards. So, oh, there we go. It, it does work. Okay, it kind of works. So there we go. But yeah, experiment with it. See what you can do with it. And uh, there we go. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this video was useful, teaching you how to make a magic fireball. If you have any other videos magic related, a lot of people want some magic videos, let me know what type of magic you want to make, and I'll try and do them. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Click the like button if you're enjoying the videos. And you can check out the next video. It should be on your screen now. I'm Alvin Blocks, signing off. Cheers. Bye.